Beating is like breathing. It's like being a musician or any other kind of a painter. It's not something you do, it's who you are. It connects me with the past and it propels me into the future. All with a little bit of thread, a steel needle and a chunk of glass. I find the magic in time travel happens at the beating table. My family's history in Wisconsin dates back to that 1820 removal. We came during the second wave of Oneida migration. We're part of the Haudenosaunee, part of the Six Nations. Haudenosaunee, we exist in the past, the present, and the future, and so does our art. I did not choose beadwork, beadwork chose me. <laughs> My early days centered around attending workshops given by Samuel Thomas and his mom, Lorna Hill. Lorna explained to me that the work I was getting involved in was not going to stand for just me. It was going to stand for all the beaters who ever were and all the beaters yet to come. A hallmark of Iroquois or Haudenosaunee raised beadwork is that it is just that raised. We pile our beads on top of the substrate so that it's dimensional, so that it's embossed, so that it rises above the surface. This is flame urn. Flame urn represents the council fire that was lit at the beginning of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy. Each of the five sides is unique just as each of the five nations are independent and sovereign. I'm taking old forms, old shapes, old designs, richly and deeply understanding their connection to our heritage and our culture, but moving them, pushing them, asking them to do more than they've ever done before. I have spent my adult life in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. The piece that I'm working on now is meant to provide rest to those Indians buried and abandoned in a mass native grave on the campus of the University of Wisconsin Stevens Point. This will become the medicine bag, the memorial piece that's intended to honor the ancestors beneath our feet. So that when this otter transforms from his current state, his head will come over as a flap and the inside of his tail will be beaded and decorated with these ornaments. Those Indians died from a scarlet fever outbreak in the early 1860s. Because of the lines of demarcation that happened during an epidemic, because of how epidemics differently impact people of color and people of low income, those choruses resonate still today. Art's job is to take difficult and complex situations and meld them and resolve them into a thing of meaning. My grandparents met at Indian government school. They were assimilated. They lost all of their traditions and, and their cultures, their language, their, anything that had to do with being Native. When I came to Karen Ann's table, kitchen table, and learned the raised beadwork, it made me feel connected. And it made me feel like, here's where I belong. Every really good piece of raised beadwork that I've ever seen 
is marked with an encirclement of beads that surrounds the central design. Each one of those beads stands for a particular Iroquois person. But like that ring of beads, if you pluck out any one bead, the entire design is negatively impacted. We're an integral part of everything that has happened, is happening, and will happen. Ray's beadwork matters in the world today because we matter in the world today. Mm -hmm.